Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about Imagine Learning, how to add students and how to access different features on Imagine Learning. So the first step we're going to do is go to our internet and we are going to click in our web browser and we are going to type in my.imaginelearning.com and then we're going to click enter. This is where you're going to log in. This is the teacher login screen. It is different from the student login screen. So for this, I made your username and passwords. Um, the teachers that you used Imagine Learning previously, you're going to use the same username and password that you had. For the new teachers, the teachers that are new to Imagine Learning, you're just going to use your email address. I'm going to use Ms. Hopkins here. And then your password is going to be Pemberton, lowercase p, and then just click enter. Okay, now when you first log in, this is the screen that you will see. I want you to go over here to options. You will see your name, the site code, and this is where you can change your password and also log out of your account. So we're going to click change password. Your current password is Pemberton with the lowercase p. You can create a new password if you would like to. If you do not want to, then don't worry about it. You can just use Pemberton. Our next step is going to be to add students to our accounts. So make sure students and groups is highlighted over here in this menu bar and we're going to just click on that and then you will see your username right here and you will see organizations and you should see summer school over here and right now there's only one student that I have put in and um, you'll only see one group you'll see your group and you'll see 33 staff members have been added to the account as well. So for this step, we're going to click on students right up here at the top. We're going to click add. And now we can't search for the students because we didn't put them in the database yet. So we have to create new student. And now you should see the organization should say summer school and the groups should have your name underneath of it. So the first thing you're going to do is just type in the student name first and last, and then the student username, and then a password, one, two, three, four, five. Um, anybody can use this sample student that I'm creating now to model for the students how to log in or to just show an assignment or a lesson. If you wanted to share something with whole group on the smart board or something like that, you can create your own sample student using your first and last name and create a username and password, it's totally up to you. For the student usernames, I would say use their first name and one, two, three, and for the password, just use one, two, three, four, five. If you would like to use something different, that's totally up to you, and you can feel free to do that. Um, after you put their username and password, you're going to click the grade level, and then session time should stay at 20 minutes, and the language should stay at English. And then you can just click Save and Create More, and then click Create. Now you can go ahead and add your next student. And you can keep doing that until you're finished adding all of your students. Once you've put all of your students in, if students is highlighted right over here, you should see a list of your students. If you check this box and you click Actions, you can actually print your login, your student login cards. And this is what they will look like. And then you just click print and you can print those out and cut them out and give them to the student so they know what their login information is. Once we've created our student, we can go ahead and go to go.imaginelearning.com. That's where the students log in. And you can test your student login that you just created to see what the students will see. So I'm going to close this out because it takes a minute to load. And I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the page that has already loaded. And this is what the students will see at go.imaginelearning.com to log in. So we're going to put in the student's username. So Brianna, one, one, two, three, and then her password was one, two, three, four. And we're going to log in. Oh, must have been one, two, three, four, five. Now this does take a minute to load, and it is a little loud. Let's go exploring, running and soaring, around Imagine Island. We'll but this is what you're going to see. Um, this is what the students are going to see, so you definitely want to check this out before um, you do anything. 
and I'm just going to exit so you can watch that if you would like. Now I did set up a wiki page. On the wiki page there is a getting started guide PDF that you can download. There is a link to the teacher login, my.imaginelearning.com. There's a link to the student login, go.imaginelearning.com. And then if you scroll down, you will find some printouts from Imagine Learning that you can use in the classroom or on your smart board. And then you'll also find level readers for grades two to six, which all came from the Imagine Learning website. If you go back to the Imagine Learning website and you click on activities, on the menu bar on the left side, you'll see teacher resources. That is where I got the printouts and the leveled readers. If you click on the teacher resources, it's going to take you to all of these resources they have available for you. And there are so many different things on here. Um, and you can easily search by using the, the search bar right up here as well. So feel free to explore that and find resources for yourselves. And then over here is where you'll find the portfolio for the students. Once you have your students in, you'll also find the usage, which will tell you how many minutes each student completed or whole, the whole group completed or the grade level completed. And we are trying to do 20 minutes a day and we, our goal is 100 minutes a week. The students can use this, use this program at home as well. So we might get more than our goal, hopefully. Progress shows you, you can get an overview of the progress for your whole group. And you can see who's below, near, or at, or above grade level. And you can also look by individual student once you have your students put in and they've completed some lessons or assignments. Growth is where you will see how much growth each student has had. If you click on action areas, it will take you to teacher action areas. and. This helps you to identify students who are struggling or need extra help. It has intervention tools and the skills that the students need to work on. And it will also show you related printouts that you can print out to help the students as well. Um, if you need this little tutorial, you can skip it, but you can always get back to it right up here in the corner if you click tutorial. And once you have all your students in and they've completed activities, this is where all of the data will be that will let you know who needs help with what.